Hi everyone, it's Nix user here. So you might recall that last video uh, where I did uh, a bit of an likes and dislikes about OpenSUSE, and I must uh, reiterate that I actually really like OpenSUSE as a distribution as a whole. I think it's a great distro, and I think they do a lot of stuff right out of the box. I did, however, suggest a couple of things that are incorrect. One. I said that uh, it's a, an American distro and that was really a faux pas because I actually know that it's a German distro. I've known for ages um, that it, it's been used heavily in Germany and in Europe but for whatever reason I think I associated patents with America and just got my lines crossed there so really sorry about that. Next thing is that I wanted to address is I still maintain it that I do not like the codec setup in OpenSUSE. When you download VLC, you expect, just like you get on Windows, a VLC install that works out of the box. You expect one that, if you go and download some random MP4, it's going to work. Now, I totally get, I totally get the idea that OpenSUSE and SUSE as a whole is an enterprise-targeted distribution. I mean, I get that. Um, you wouldn't have seen this such hard work being put into a distribution if that weren't the case. But the fact of the matter is, is that for the user that just goes onto their local repository or goes to the OpenSUSE website, downloads OpenSUSE Elite, um, they're going to kind of expect that when you download VLC, it's going to be the same experience that you get in Windows. Y you do not see a cut down version of VLC in Windows. I don't expect it in many distributions that don't clearly advertise that they are free and open source. Um, focused so much and what do I mean by that I mean if you go to the free software foundations website you can find a bunch of distributions well some that are targeted um, towards freedom like for example there used to be and I, I hope it's still the case Trisquel I wouldn't expect necessarily that Trisquel for example will have the best uh, video drivers out there available for graphics cards on the other hand, however, I don't think they've got a problem with patents, and so you actually do get in Truesquell, if I recall correctly, correct running of MP4s and, and files as such. Other distributions like Fedora, which tend to have another, you know, they tend to be enterprise focused, you don't get the codecs, okay? There is a free and open source focus in Fedora, not so much on the firmware side, but definitely on uh, the, you know, you don't get binary drivers and this, that, and the other in there. Um, on the codec side, they're definitely sensitive about um, uh, the codecs that they ship. Uh, they make sure that they are uh, non-patent encumbered, uh, that type of thing. Now, that being said, it's not that they are against certain formats. Like, for example, MP3 is now fully supported uh, under Fedora. And I demonstrated that you can play MP3 files under Fedora. But that was only because the patent expired. So again, I totally get it. It's not like I'm new to distros. I've been using uh, GNU plus Linux for 15 years, and I totally understand this. I've been here since, you know, not early in the piece, but sort of halfway in the piece. So um, anyway, without further any uh, further ado, I wanted to demonstrate the use of Pac-Man. Now, this is an, pretty much an unscripted video. I did take a look to make sure at least that it's accessible. It, uh, so the first thing is is that people say use Pac-Man. So I thought, okay, well, let's try that. Let's type Pac-Man. No good. Okay. So, um, however, we can type software. And you would have seen it come up just before. And you can go software repositories. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to punch in the password here. And we're going to just get what, um, what repositories are enabled. Now, I'm not going to focus on GPG keys and bits and bobs like that, but what I am going to focus on is adding a community repository. Now, this is much how it used to be when I used to use SUSE on a daily basis. And, um, and Pac-Man, although it wasn't as well organized back then, let's see how we go. So it's just got to um, obviously check the network config, download a list of online uh, repositories, and the one we're going to be choosing here is the Pac-Man repository. Okay, so let's go and do that. Let's hope that everything works. So let's just give that a tick. I may even consider fast forwarding through this section depending on how it goes. Let's trust that. Now I don't have a particularly slow connection here. I'm actually running on fiber to the premises. So this is quite slow, but nothing to do with my connection per se. Now what I'll be attempting to do here is I'll be attempting to install VLC. I think that's what our target should be. VLC and 
I may even try to install, I might even try to install uh, FFmpeg, but I think FFmpeg will be pulled in at least as a library by VLC uh, through libav. The reason for this is that the VLC is not a standalone application, it does require some third party libraries uh, in Q including Qt, but Qt's not to do with the multimedia framework to the best of my understanding. It's uh, FFmpeg that provides some support there, along with some libraries uh, specifically provided by VLC. Uh, an example of a library provided by VLC is uh, libx264, which is a H264 implementation. So again, it's one of those patent encumbered things uh, that you'd have to worry about if you uh, were on a distribution that didn't, didn't provide such a uh, user-friendly approach. So what we'll do is we'll press, you can see that Pac-Man has been, uh, the Pac-Man repository has been installed there, and we'll go OK. And I'm going to use the GUI methods today. It's um, not necessary, I guess, but let's try to install uh, some software, namely VLC. So we'll give that a moment to respond. Now, I'm going to type VLC in here. Let's do a bit of a search. Now, it's saying that I've got lib I've got VLC installed. I wonder if I can see which repository it comes from. That's the the thing I'm really interested in. See, I've got to be careful here because I actually um, I want it to be capable of running. I want it to be cap capable of running um, the, or playing the files that uh, I would expect to be only playable by um, a media player that's capable of playing, you know, uh, patent covered formats. Not so sure here. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that one off. I actually don't know here. Technical data. Pac-Man. That's play. Yeah, so that's provided by Pac-Man. What about this guy? Uh, the vendor is open SUSE. So I'm in an interesting state of affairs. How about we just try and install that? That. Let's accept that solution. Um, we've got some, yeah, we've got libx264 that's going to be installed. Good luck to me. I don't see anything to do with ffmpeg in there, to the best of my knowledge. But I might have missed something, who knows. Small download size, shouldn't take too long. libavutil. That will be a ffmpeg. Yes, definitely. A, that is definitely an FFmpeg uh, package. libav util. libav codec. So that's another FFmpeg package. So that's now complete. Now, even though I fast forwarded and cut through some of that, you could tell that just by the download speeds and the time that it, it wasn't the fastest. Now if I use Debian, uh, I'm pretty much going to get a very fast response. So that's probably one of the downsides of using a third party repository is they might not have the bandwidth that you have. Um, so hence it just takes a little bit long, like that was, there were not many packages there. 10 high level packages to be installed, of course there were 14 uh, sub packages under that and our lapse time is 3 minutes and 4 seconds. Total install size is 16.03 megs and the download size is only 6.12. So I'm telling you, I promise you that that under uh, Debian or Ubuntu Linux Mint using local repos from my ISP or something like that would have been very very quick. So I'm not going to put down a Pac-Man because I think they're a vital service but nonetheless uh, if you're looking for instant gratification, which today's society is often about that, but that's another video topic, I think, um, then yeah, that could be a bit of a problem. So what we'll do, um, we'll take that as the moment of truth, we'll minimise these two windows, 
and we'll get VLC running hopefully and see if it's able to now play uh, some of those videos that I have in my home directory. Let's go. VLC, VLC Media Player. Let's uh, open a file and let's, if I recall correctly, it might be in here. Okay, so I've got a couple of videos here. I've got the out.webm. No point really testing that. That worked fine last time, I believe. Let's have a look. Fantastic. We've got MP4 player format support. Hi everyone, Nick's music. And here. that's playing so nice and loudly in my ears. I don't know if that's playing loudly in yours. So that um, played perfectly fine. Um, now I'm not going to do any other examples in this video, but no, and that's just due to time constraints really. But basically the steps, just to overview the steps, okay, you go through, you, ch you type in software repositories, you put in your password, and you enable the Pac-Man repository. Then you got to go into software again, and then go install or remove software. Search for the pack for specific packages that you need. In the case of Codex, I looked for a particular Codex package from supplied by Pac-Man. So you might recall I looked into the detail of the package, and it was supplied by Pac-Man, and I installed that. And there were a number of other sub packages that needed to be installed. So anyway, guys. I'm going to leave it there. Please leave your comments below. If you like this video, uh, hit that like button. And if you'd like to receive more of this content, just remember to subscribe and share with your friends. Alright guys, I'll catch you later. Bye now.